All right, we are back, and our second topic of the day, uh, main topic of the day, is the birthday controversies over at Star Wars. Uh, and this is how it all started. I woke up, and I saw a comment from one of our Jedi Master members, Star Wars Reviewed. Star Wars Reviewed said, uh, you know, I try to convince myself that there is not a civil war going on at Lucasfilm where one side is completely trying to do away with the original trilogy and people that are right-leaning. But after seeing crap like this, where they intentionally leave out key figures like Billy D and James Earl Jones, I don't know if I can truly convince myself any more. Thank you so much, uh, Star Wars Reviewed, for that very heartfelt uh, and, and, and thoughtful comment. And I agree. And we're going to actually jump over to this article and cover that now, Nick. So Lucasfilm and Star Wars ignore another legendary black actor, Billy D. Williams, written by WDW Pro over at Pirates and Princesses. Uh, so many Fandom Menace members cover WDW Pro's articles. We haven't done too many, but he writes so many good ones. Definitely go and check out his work. He says, if you've been following Lucasfilm or Star Wars on Twitter, you might have noticed that they apparently love wishing happy birthdays to people who have worked for them. In fact, at the top of Lucasfilm's Twitter account right now, they're wishing happy birthday to someone most people have probably never heard of. And that is uh, executive creator director Doug Chang. Uh, you see the tweet there of them wishing him a happy birthday. Uh, however, he worked with Lucas a lot on the prequels. and stuff. He did. He did. However, an extremely bizarre trend is beginning to emerge with whoever runs these social media accounts. And that is, they seem to never wish a happy birthday to African-American actors associated with Star Wars who run afoul of a certain political viewpoint. Now, that, that may seem like a niche or trite point to make, but this is a long-running pattern that we've come to discover. And you see them wishing happy birthday here to Oscar Isaac, uh, John Boyega, even Bryce Dallas Howard. And the article goes on. It's not too far of a stretch to say that a huge chunk of the social media account's actions are to say happy birthday to just about everyone who has worked for anything Star Wars or Lucasfilm. If you've once delivered some coffee to a third-party vendor working with Lucasfilm in the 80s, <laughs> there's a chance they're going to wish you a happy birthday at some point this year. If there's only one thing Kathy Kennedy has excelled at with Lucasfilm, it's creating a heck of a birthday recognition program. So it is then extremely curious who they have left out of their constant birthday bonanza over there. It started when they failed to recognize Carl Weathers' birthday almost immediately after he said something positive about Gina Carano. Next, on his 90th birthday and calls for tremendous celebration, neither Star Wars nor Lucasfilm recognized the legendary James Earl Jones. The voice of Darth Vader, possibly the most iconic villain ever, was looked over by Lucasfilm and Star Wars on his 90th birthday. Sacrilege. Yeah. At the time, we speculated it might be because James Earl Jones is rumored to be a Republican or have held conservative beliefs. It's not as if Lucasfilm and Star Wars Twitter accounts have been blindsided by this criticism. This is something that fans have made very clear in the past was a misstep, and yet it, it keeps happening without any change. At no point have the account said, whoops, we made a mistake and forgot to wish the legendary James Earl Jones a wonderful 90th birthday. Nope, they just keep on ignoring these actors. Now Star Wars and Lucasfilm have ignored Billy D. Williams, the actor of Lando Calrissian, and it's not as if he's out in obscurity. He did just play the character in J.J. Abrams' Episode 9, and the character of Lando is being used by Star Wars Lucasfilm to promote LGBTQ values with the declaration of the Star Wars, I'm sorry, of the character officially being a pansexual in Star Wars canon. And Billy D. Williams was asked about that. He made a, some, a to them a controversial quote saying that that had, that had to do with Solo's failure. Like, Billy D. Williams came out and publicly spoke about that. So, uh, the article finishes here. Let us know what you think in the comments below. Are Lucasfilm and Star Wars accounts purposefully ignoring African-American actors who differ in their opinions from the accepted narrative? We'd love to hear your opinion, and hey, maybe you could take the time to wish a film icon a happy birthday. Well, let's just say this right away. Happy birthday to... Billy, Billy D. Billy Williams, D. James Earl Jones, uh, all of you guys that have been overlooked. So what do, you, what do you shoot on this, Nick? What is your take? I think it's a lot cooler on the cool side of the pillow. 
<laughs> Family Guy reference with Billy yeah. D's face. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, there kind of is a trend there for sure. It's kind of obvious at this point. Uh, we've hit on it on the past. Uh, they also didn't wish Warwick Davis. Uh, yeah, they did. Oh, did they? They did. Oh, okay. Uh, but yeah, we hit on the uh, uh, on the um, James Earl Jones one and uh i'm not surprised that they just left billy d out as well um i I mean really nothing they do really surprises me a whole lot anymore (laughs) yep you know it kind of takes me back to me this is somewhat related yeah the the dr afra book that just came out uh, hang on i'll be right back okay the dr afra book that just came out uh right here you see it uh this is related to me. Look at the way they they portrayed Luke and Han in the book, but then Leia. Rebel royalty has a mean left hook. The point that I made yesterday in that video was that if Carrie Fisher had been a Reagan conservative, they wouldn't have said that about her. They would have taken a shot at her just like they did Luke and Han. I just have to believe that. I might be wrong, but I don't I doubt it. I doubt it. Uh, All if, right. if Carrie, my point, Nick, is if Carrie Fisher had been a Reagan conservative, then even in this Dr. Afra book, they would not be portraying her in a positive light. She would get shade thrown at her just like they did with Luke and Han. That's my point. And that speaks to the agenda that goes beyond just telling good Star Wars. That's what we want. That's where you're dropping the ball, Disney. Just give us good Star Wars. Quit politicizing everything. And how dare you? for not wishing these people a happy birthday. When you do everybody else that are way less significant than these, uh, than the characters that these actors played. Yes. Um, and and I don't even know what Carrie's politics were. And I never even cared. Uh, yeah, I don't either. You know, I I have no idea what her part. I mean, Mark Hamill makes his very well known. So everybody knows his, um, but uh, but most of these people, I have no idea where they stand, and right. and I honestly don't have never cared. Right. Yeah, I agree. Well, and here's another thing, like I don't understand the the picking favorites and things like like when Carrie Fisher died, there was a huge video tribute. I mean, it was amazing. I cried watching it. We used it in our sequel trilogy documentary. It was yep. so good. But Kenny Baker had also died during that time. There was no such video tribute. No. Nope. Peter Mayhew died. There was no such video tribute. Um, uh, who else died? Um, David Prowse. When David yep. Prowse passed away several months back, there was no such video tribute. Mm-mm. We're talking about the icon of Star Wars, the greatest villain of all time. James Earl Jones is not Darth Vader. David Prowse was Darth Vader. Mm. Um. And James Earl Jones has even gone on record and admitted that. I know a lot of people like to say, James Earl Jones, no, he's the voice. The actor that got it done was Prowse. Um, He's the icon, and he wasn't treated as such. You know, and when Harrison Ford dies, yeah, there'll be a big thing from from them. But when Mark Hamill dies, even Mark Hamill, I don't know. Uh, and, And, you know, you could also speculate if Mark Hamill did die, when he, when he passes away, if Disney comes out with this big grand thing, is politics tied to that? Is that part of the narrative here? Maybe because he definitely doesn't agree with them on uh, on that sequel trilogy. That's for sure. I know he came out and made some statements, uh, but I think he was being very sarcastic. Um, you know, uh, and kind of just saying some of that stuff just to probably because he was told to. You know, right? Uh, he he made it very clear from the, from the get go he was not uh, not a fan of what they were doing with the sequel trilogy. Well, and this is another thing that this is how the fans win. Uh, if if Disney is doing something that is wrong, if they're slighting Billy D. Williams, we're, we're never going to know. We're we're never going to know the truth behind it. You would like to think that they would be good enough to go back and fix it after the fact. We totally missed his birthday. 
Happy birthday, Billy D. Williams. What's the harm in doing that? Yeah. Nothing. Happy belated birthday. You know, you could go buy a freaking card that yep. says that. Uh, yeah. I don't understand that. And the fact that they won't do that and own up to that, that lets me think there's something more here. That's evidence yeah. to support that. And I yeah. can't I can't get past that. But I'm not a I'm not a famous actor and I never will be. But I would think that it would be more meaningful to James Earl Jones and Billy D. Williams for people like us, all of us, the fans, to be wishing them a happy birthday, not the corporation. Yeah, yeah. 